Okay, it's 10 o'clock. We're going to go ahead and get started. Um, Jim, if you want to start your presentation, um, we're ready to go here in the room. Okay. okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Jim Trawick. I work with the uh, NASA IVNV program as an analyst uh, on the Ground Systems Development and Operations Program at Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Uh, what we're going to talk about for the next half hour is semantic-based knowledge representation. We've seen some examples of it in, in some previous um, presentations uh, yesterday and today, um, but they weren't uh, called out as such, and uh, I'm going to try to make some suggestions as to what we might do with this uh, going forward. First thing we need to do is define uh, what is semantics. Uh, it's a much overloaded term. Uh, and we need to know what it is in the context of, of uh, knowledge representation. Uh, we're also going to uh, see how we can use uh, semantic-based knowledge representation in the context of IVNV. Uh, I'm going to give a few examples and um, uh, suggest a couple of others. Uh, we're also going to see uh, some other interesting uses of semantic-based knowledge representation uh, in other industries and take a quick look at uh, what might be next uh, using it for IVNV. Um, what is semantics? Uh, as my lawyer uncle used to say, uh, it depends. Um, the literal meaning of the Greek word uh, semetikos is uh, signifiers, uh, signs or symbols, and their interpretation. If you're a philosopher, uh, semantics means the study of meanings in, in their context. Uh, if you're a linguist, uh, the linguist uh, says that, that uh, semantics is a study of meaning um, that is used in understanding uh, in human expression, usually in speech. And I just lost the... Okay. Um, if you're a computer scientist, um, we heard a, an example of that in the uh, AMF uh, presentation, uh, where semantics is the processes that a computer follows. Uh, when executing a particular uh, problem in a, in a particular language, um, and errors in that, of course, need to be called out. Uh, if we're an IVNV analyst, uh, we need to be a little of all of these things. Uh, so semantics in this context of this presentation is finding the meaning of evidence in its context. Um, how does semantics relate to knowledge representation? Uh, a semantic network is used when knowledge is best understood as a set of relationships um, that tie concepts together. Uh, and in that, context is everything. Uh, a particular finding may be important in one context. It may be not important at all uh, in another context. Um, semantic um, machines are not a new concept. Um, Knowledge-based expert systems have been around for the last 30 years. Uh, relational databases have been around for 40. Uh, it is not a new concept. I'm not suggesting a new concept, but rather a new use of a rather old concept. Uh, the, one of the advantages in a semantic-based uh, re knowledge representation is that its extended uh, ontological taxonomic structure makes it derivable and searchable and mineable. And all of these features uh, are useful 
in analyzing not only what went wrong, but how you can do it better. These stored relationships uh, provide all of the data that's necessary to automatically uh, generate visual network diagrams and to later mine for significances of subtle relationships. Um, a speaker earlier today uh, brought out some of those things that uh, we would like to mine and a, a input into a, um, a knowledge-based uh, system might be a good way to start that analysis. Here's a, a very basic, very simplistic uh, um, semantic uh, network model. Um, as we can see from, from the model, uh, you've got some, some nouns here uh, of various things that, that uh, are, should be familiar to those that, that uh, have ever seen um, uh, animal taxonomies. taxonomies. Um, we basically have, have started with animal and we've gone backwards to different kinds of animals uh, and decided described uh, in relationships, which are the arrows, um, different contents uh, of each um, uh, noun. Uh, you can look at the contents, as, as the, the things as, as properties or metadata, uh, whatever. Uh, in this simplistic uh, model, um, you can see cat is a mammal. You can see bear is a mammal. Um, both cats and bears have fur, um, but if you look only at the ontology here, uh, you might suggest that cats and bears are the same thing. Um, we know that they're not, so there has to be additional uh, breakdowns uh, to determine uh, the true relationships between cats and bears. Um, a whale is a mammal, uh, but it doesn't have fur. Um, it lives in the water. Bears and cats may periodically get into the water, but they don't live there. Um, a fish uh, lives in the water, but it's not a mammal, but it is an animal. And you can see kind of a, a the, you can infer the complexity that you can generate uh, with this and how each component uh, in turn can break down into a very simple um, structure and relationship. Okay. okay, how would we use semantics uh, in the context of IVNV? Uh, one of the things that we can do is tracking and mining of, of findings, issues, and risks. Um, and the reported anomalies uh, are inherently contextual. Uh, software error uh, in a hypergolic propellant valve uh, that causes it to open when it's not supposed to uh, if there's propellant behind that valve, it's catastrophic. If there is no propellant behind that valve, then it may be inconvenient. It may uh, cause damage to the valve, uh, but the software problem still needs to be fixed. Uh, and semantic-based uh, knowledge systems can suggest appropriate scoring uh, of anomalous findings based on context and some predetermined uh, set of bars. Okay, uh, another use of uh, semantics in the, the IVNV area uh, is tracking and mining uh, of IVNV evidence. Uh, semantic uh, knowledge system can describe evidence element relationships and derive their significance. Um, basically, if you find a particular relationship happening a lot, uh, it's fairly easy to go back and, um, and uh, bring out patterns uh, in that significance. Um, semantic knowledge system can suggest additional evidence that must be acquired in order to complete analysis. If you have a, a branch in a relationship that has no attachment, um, you can, can uh, have your, your knowledge base uh, automatically output that you need another piece of evidence to complete your analysis. And one thing that, that knowledge-based systems always do is generate the decision path that it came to that conclusion on, and that path can be evaluated and learned from. Uh, another thing that we can use uh, a semantic-based knowledge representation for is um, 
getting weirdnesses going on here. Uh, semantic state, uh, assurance statement developments. Okay. okay. To, to use a semantic-based knowledge system in, in, in an assurance statement development, um, we can get that system to suggest assurances that can be made from evidence that we've already captured, uh, or assurance elements that we've already captured. We can also uh, have that system suggest to us caveats, i.e. relationships that have not been fulfilled, that have to be attached to the assurances um, that we have desired to be made uh, because those elemental relationships don't exist. And again, if we are called into question as to why we found that caveat necessary or um, the basis that we said we could make that assurance on, uh, this knowledge-based system generates that des decision path uh, and that decision path can be further analyzed. And this is a simplistic diagram of how we would use um, knowledge-based systems, um, semantic knowledge-based systems, in a, in a derivation of assurance cases. Uh, the relationships here um, are, are assumptions and evidence uh, based on assurance cases or based on, on uh, analysis results uh, that basically filter up and create uh, assurance cases. Now there's a great deal of metadata that has to be captured in addition to this um, that um, isn't part of the relationships themselves. Uh, the assurance cases have text and, and that sort of thing um, that wouldn't be captured, but the decision flow uh, would be captured uh, in the sets of relationships here. Um, what are some other interesting uses of semantic-based knowledge representation? Um, one of the things that most people remember, uh, I recorded all three days of the Watson Computer uh, Jeopardy uh, television programs. Um, this is, was a very impressive use of, of uh, computer hardware in a natural language uh, situation uh, in an open domain. Um, the, the openness of, of the domain, basically the Jeopardy uh, staff felt free to, to ask any question in any domain um, and challenge the computer system with it. Uh, it is an example of a semantic-based knowledge representation and retrieval system in several of its elements. Uh, its competitors. Uh, were two other semantic-based knowledge representation and retrieval systems, which were two well-read uh, human beings. Uh, I don't claim uh, responsibility uh, for this diagram. It was uh, uh, part of a sales package uh, that IBM uses um, to sell uh, Watson for a medical advisory system. Uh, so it's not just an a game show trick, uh, they're actually using this uh, to be, uh, to help people, to, to uh, assist doctors in very difficult uh, situations. And the, the evidence is uh, that it's being used uh, at a considerable level in that environment. Some of the places that the semantic-based uh, uh, representations are used uh, is are in the, the uh, candidate answer generation uh, from the answer sources, uh, which uh, then descend into to, uh, generating the hypothesis for, for uh, in the Jeopardy case, what the question would be uh, for that answer. Uh, there's some soft filtering that's done on that, of course, to, to eliminate the obvious uh, false positives. But the key element, uh, that uses semantic-based representation is in the deep evidence scoring. And basically, it traced uh, these relationships up a fairly long uh, semantic chain uh, to determine uh, whether or not there was evidence for a particular answer uh, being correct. Uh, the rest of it is uh, fairly straightforward 
mechanical Linear. processing uh, that generated answers uh, at the end of uh, each question. Uh, might be worthy to note that, that the, uh, the Watson machinery earned itself a uh, million dollars. I'm not sure that whether that was actually paid, uh, but it was certainly worth that to them in, uh, in the advertising and, and uh, the acceptance that it got among the medical community. Okay, given all of that, what do we do? Uh, we've shown that knowledge-based systems uh, show promise uh, for documenting and mining uh, various aspects of the IVMD uh, process, um, and that, that uh, uh, it also shows promise in areas that are not particularly IVMD. So what do we do now? Um, what I would suggest is the development of a self-populating database, uh, already suggested uh, by another presenter today, um, to enter the entities and relationships uh, of mul multiple uh, functionalities and domains, uh, things like requirement quality, uh, uh, in, in a particular domain, um, developing a self-populating database tool for entering uh, the, the various uh, assurance elements. Um, and, develop, and to do that, we need to um, develop a uh, common notation uh, for the ISO 15026-2 uh, uh, that is tailored to IVNV. Now, that was their intention when they put that package together, but there are a lot of things that we are finding in actual use. Uh, we simply don't know. Uh, what are the probabilities that a particular uh, thing is, is uncertain? It's, it's very uh, difficult to quantify those kinds of things. Um, we also need to develop uh, uh, display and report generation. Uh, and mining tools to make the databases useful once they're generated. And we also need uh, to use the tools uh, to analyze the patterns and improve the IVMD process. Now, are there any questions? Are there any questions in the room? Are there any questions on the phone? And I don't have any questions for you online, Jim. Okay. All right. Um, the other breakout session is still going on, from what I can tell. But if you want to head over to, over there, if any questions come through the web, I will send them your way. Sounds so. good. We are going to get the next presentation set here. Um, we're about 14, 13 minutes early, so if you guys are ready, we can go ahead and get started.